last week, we talked a little bit about the dual nature of Advent you know, as a time to watch and wait and as a time to seek and share. We watch and wait for the second coming of Christ and we seek and share the grace of God revealed first in the incarnation and then today through those God places in our lives. After last week's message, I was asked an interesting question. If grace is God's measure, how do we measure grace? As I thought about it this week, I wondered, how do we measure something without substance? I mean, we can't see or touch grace, but we know when it's in our presence. And when we share it with someone, <clears throat> There's nothing physical that we hand them, yet we can see the change in the other when they receive it. So if we can know when it is present and see its effects, then we should be able to measure it, shouldn't we? But how? Let's begin by defining it. The simplest definition of grace is unmerited favor, the receiving of something good for which we do not deserve. With that understanding of grace, we could probably point to any number of things in our day-to-day -day lives that we could classify as revealed grace. The problem with measuring grace in this way is that grace becomes about things. And once it becomes about things, then it becomes a little bit of a competition. I have more grace than you. And that means I am more favored. And if I am more favored, well, you get where that goes. You can see the path that it leads us down. Not one to thanksgiving for what we've received, but one of prideful arrogance and lust for more things. So if things are not the measure, what is it we use? Something Paul says in his letter to the Ephesians might help us. In chapter 4, verse 7, Paul says, But to each one of us, grace has been given according to the measure of Christ's gift. <clears throat> now in the English language, when something says Christ's gift, Tom's car, the organs sound, we call that a possessive phrase. In other words, the adjective belongs to the noun that precedes it. So the sound belongs to the organ. The car belongs to Tom. And the gift belongs to Christ. So when we hear a special sound, not there, I was going to have her hit a key. <laughs> hit, hit, just hit a key on the organ. Anything? Anything? We know the organ is near. When you see my car in the parking lot, it's safe to assume I'm not too far away. And when we encounter the gift that Paul describes, we believe Christ. And therefore, God's grace is in our midst. But what is the gift that Paul describes? We get a clue in today's gospel reading. John has been going around preaching the message of repentance so that the people would get ready for the fulfillment of God's promise of living grace in their midst. Of course, people want to know if John is the instrument of that grace. To which he replies, no way. The grace is not mine to give. His job, he says, is to get Israel ready for the one who is coming, who not only has the power and authority to reveal God's grace, but the right to share it with those who would receive it. Because it is his to give, and his to share. 
John is, of course, talking about Jesus, God incarnate, who came to us not in royal possession, but humbly, that he might know our sufferings and help lead us back into right relationship. Okay, all well and good. <clears throat> but are we really any closer to understanding how to measure grace? I think so. Because now we have something revealing grace that can be seen and touched. We have Jesus. In Jesus, grace takes substance. And through the story of his life, found in scripture, we are given images of how to recognize that same grace in our lives today. But recognizing that grace is only part of it. We need to be able to embrace it if we are going to share it. So how do we embrace something we can't see or touch? Paul helps us out here too. In that Christ gift, the gift of Christ in our midst we celebrate this season becomes Christ's gift. The gift of Christ in our midst. How is that possible? John tells us in our gospel today it is, through the pos it is possible through the gift of the Holy Spirit that Jesus will pour over us like living water. The same living water Jesus talked to and told about to a woman by a well. Water that fills us to overflowing and has the power to keep us from ever thirsting for earthly things again. Paul in his letters reminds people over and over, don't forget this. That while Jesus no longer walks in our midst, his spirit dwells within us. It is through the spirit, God's spirit, what we call the Holy Spirit, that we are able to measure the depth of God's grace. In that God incarnate walked among us, died for us, and overcame death that we might have hope. Hope that is only found in grace and through grace. God did not give us this gift because we deserved it, but because we are loved. And knowing all this, what is then the measure we use to measure God's grace? Jesus Christ, who was, who is, who always will be with us and in us. This endless nature of Christ lets us know the endless nature of grace. Amen.